all those whom are joining online, inshaAllah, thank you very much. Please make comments from the talks, put some notes in your comment section from what you understood from the talk like course lectures that these are teachings and this is our curriculum. We had an email that somebody said, I got all the books and it's just so difficult, so difficult and so overwhelmed and I don't understand how anyone can be overwhelmed because we don't have any rules. Nobody was supposed to read 30 pages a day and, and to summarize anything. So this is everyone's individual characteristic in which somebody may come to tariqah and think, I have to reach sainthood within the next few months and I'm going to try to do everything to reach that. But in reality you shouldn't be thinking of achieving anything other than good character, that I'm going to get this curriculum. I'm going to slowly begin as a life change to study this. And I'll start with the meditation book of the shaykh, the energy books of the shaykh and I begin every day slowly to read them. And I begin to meditate and connect my heart and take an accounting. There was nothing to achieve, we didn't tell anyone there was any goal, there was any title. That there was no speed in which somebody had to read 30 pages a day and summarize something. So you can see how people have something where they self-impose on themselves because that's their characteristic. You show a, a, a plate of food and they feel that they're obliged to eat it all in five minutes. But no, this is a lifelong process and you pray that you stay within your life because most may take a few bites and their nafs will make them to run away because it's not an easy path. And the more you sit for it and try to absorb yourself in the reality, the nafs is also trying to attack and become a shariq with shaitan to leave and to get up and go, inshaAllah. Allah give us strength and, and fortitude. And in this muraqabah and in the practices and in the connection becomes our source of, of energy and protection inshaAllah to safeguard against these difficulties. What we got? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah I was wondering what if we don't feel we are being Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Tested, maybe small tests but we don't sense big ones, should we be worried? One sec, I have to give myself a reminder nowadays. Things will come and go. Some people may have a God-given gift <clears throat> For sabr means they're already head of the game in which Allah gave them good character. Haji is like that, that very patient man goes 70 feet up on the, on the scaffolding and everybody is frightened to death. We say, Shaykh how come you don't put a harness and thinking that he's going to put a harness and tie it to the building to make himself safe. He listened, he put the harness but it was not tied to anything. So he's <laughs> just standing on the top of the building with the harness on, yeah. So I mean Allah gives servants good character, they're born with it or through life 
the difficulties they faced, they have that character, means they're already very high in the game. So if you have and you've been given this God-given character or achieved it through your life process, you may come to this path with a character of sabr. And many things are happening in your life and you don't view them to be difficult. And there are those whom they get drunk with one grape. Literally uh, it, the, the grape juice merely touches their lips and they're out of control, everything's, everything's upside down. What is this? What is that? Well, how do you fix it? What's that? How do we fix this? How do we fix that? And that's not good, the character's not good. That everything is a panic, everything is manic, everything is disturbed, everything is wrong. And the servant of Allah has to have a, have a stableness in their character and not bipolar and we mean the polarity of attitude because medical professionals will think it's like, oh we're giving a professional diagnosis. It's not the po polarity of character. That you come in ecstatic, you're like so super happy at times that this is the best path on earth, I'm, I'm loving this path, it's so great. And then you go the exact polar opposite, this is the most difficult path on earth, drama, drama queen, all sorts of expressions and look what is that. So life should be that no up and no down, it's not the most exciting path on earth and it's definitely not the most difficult. Because we've seen people have horrific difficulties in life. So you train yourself not to be high, not to be low and you control and you keep a moderate approach in everything that you do. You study, you meditate, you do your connection, you don't get aesthetically happy and you don't go immensely down and you begin to live a life where you're like a cardiac patient. You know your, your EKG goes up and down, up and down, up and down, that pretty much becomes like a manic individual. They're always up and then they're down, they're up and down. So every time you talk to them you don't understand or you get an email from them they're either very, very happy, very, very sad, it's all over the place. The tariqah comes and teaches us, mawt qabl al mawt, death before death in which it's neither up and it's neither down. That for them it's alhamdulillah, it's up, they can control it, they know not to get too excited because tomorrow it's going to go down again. And then when it goes down they don't get too sad because they know Allah will lift it back up tomorrow, inshaAllah. So they train themselves on these, this expectation of life. The less that you expect you be happy with every moment. So all of these are, are very deep realities. You know that uh, if you're worried about the past you have depression, if you're anxious about the future you have anxiety. And these are two ropes that shaitan is playing with people. You're depressed because of all the choices you made, should I have done this, should I have my, should my father have sent me to the right school, he forced me to take the wrong classes, what, what does it have to do with anything? Then you become depressed. And shaitan now has a rope on your head pulling you, pulling you for what? The past has already been written by Allah Then anxious for the futures, you didn't do anything to get this far anyways, Allah carried you to this point, He'll carry you to the grave. So I don't know what the future brings, I've made certain intentions and my life is on a daily basis. If we can truly achieve to live our life on a daily basis. And Allah will test you, you can't be anxious for the repairman to show up, that's not a person of faith. You can't de be depressed about the choice you made in the year that passed that you didn't do something. No, it's live right now because you'll spend so much energy forward and backward that you actually had no energy for that moment and that day wasn't truly lived. And that's all that shaitan wants is to destroy every day. You spent all your, your, your 10 units of energy, five on the past and five worrying about the future, you're spent, you have nothing. Where the goal of the reality was, to, I spent no energy on the past, 
and barely energy and on thinking in the future, my energy is for that day. How am I going to use my energy today? How am I going to connect? How am I going to try to achieve what I got to achieve for today? And you live for the day. If you can do that and control that, you should be a very happy person because that day will bring a challenge, you'll survive the challenge, you'll get everything done, nothing to worry about and then you see what Allah is giving you for the next day inshaAllah. Then with a good character Allah has a contentment for the servant and begins to write the servant goodness and goodness. But if the character is always all over the place like a tornado then the test has to continue and it can continue like that for a hundred years until the person dies and goes in the grave. Allah doesn't get tired of testing His servant until He achieves the result that He's looking for. So the servant gets tired and runs away or, or you know doesn't achieve but Allah doesn't get tired. Allah wants a character and is going to continuously test until that character comes inshaAllah. And he doesn't test the servant beyond their ability, inshaAllah. MashaAllah Sayyidi you, you answered a few questions already. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah In relevance to last week's talk, could you please expand more on the rope from Divinely Presence? The role or the rope? The rope. <clears throat> what did we talk about from the rope of Divinely Presence? What, what did we say of the rope? Which talk was that? I can't remember <laughs> the talk that had the Divinely Rope. Istiqam, we said istiqam fi tariqah, hold tight to the tariqah. The rope of Divinely Presence, I don't know exactly what's that in reference to but the rope of the tariqah in which Allah is asking us to hold firm to your tariqah, means hold firm to your path and that rope of habl it has the secret of haba is that the hidayat and guidance and the ba of the oceans of, of power. So the one whom understood the, the ha and the ba that they hold firm to the oceans of guidance and they can never live a life without being with those whom are guided. So they're not misguided lives, they won't have… they want and they yearn for guidance. That's why they're hungry for knowledge. Someone who's not seeking knowledge and, and encourages other people not to seek knowledge, actually their inner reality doesn't want any guidance, they don't want to be told. They want to live within their ignorance and they don't want anyone around them to be told or to be educated, that way they can rule with ignorance over people. So that becomes dangerous, our life is the habl and the rope that Allah is asking us to hold to has to be based on guidance and it has to be from these people whom have the reality of the ba because all of Qur'an is in Fatiha, all of Fatiha is in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is in ba. So means they're also hub that they guide through love because the Qur'an is their light because that's what emanates from the heart of Prophet any light that Prophet wants to give to people is going to be what? The best of what he has, the light of Holy Qur'an. So I mean the Qur'an guides these servants, that is the reality of the ba, these are the people of the bab and the people of the door. 
and that everything about them is about love and the oceans of realities, the oceans of hayat. As a result Allah grants them the reality of the lamb which becomes hab and that their tongue is a rope. That through the tongue of their teaching it's a rope that enters onto the soul of people. When the shaykh speaks and from unseen immediately like a rope coming out and grabbing everybody's soul. Because their words are a power from the soul, from Divinely Presence. As a result their words look onto the souls of people. Alhamdulillah. And that what Allah is describing that don't separate from that rope. Don't separate from these ropes of realities means don't separate from their guidance and their teachings. Don't separate from continuously sitting in their association to hear that guidance. So some are subscribing every day watching a video coming in, video coming in because that's literally a rope on your heart every day. It comes as your coordinates, comes as your connection, comes as your confirmation because people say, oh I feel something and then I don't feel anything anymore. But are you listening every day to the lectures? There's 2,000 lectures, I don't think you listen to them all. And every day you're listening and keeping your connection with the shaykh. And this is what Allah is describing that hold firm to the rope of Allah So they begin to give these realities and these secrets of what the huruf meant by the rope because there's no rope in heavens. So it means there must be an ocean of guidance, it must be guidance from the ba and the oceans of power. So then these servants, they're hayat, they're eternal servants, they're the hidayat and guidance from Allah and from what? From the guidance of the ba and as a result Allah gives them a lisan, a lamb. And as a result when they talk it's like a rope continuously feeding into their souls and they by the association and hearing the associations they are staying connected to the shaykh. When you stop listening to the shaykh's videos and teachings and guidance you've cut your rope. You're not at a point in which to be inspired for these associations so you need your physical. The physical basis means every day they're listening to a talk, they're watching the short videos and every day they're getting fed, fed knowledges. Even they say, I heard that sobat but it means nothing because when you listen to it again and I have to listen to all the talks just to confirm what was said. And every time you listen to it you're going to hear something different from it because you put yourself out of the way and the inspiration comes in deeper and then deeper and then deeper. Because the, there's no time on heavenly knowledges. The only limitation on heaven, heavenly knowledges is your station and your darajat. If you raise your station which daily if you're practicing daily you have an ascension. Every day then you'll hear something different. If you're descending then you listen again and you're like confused and you don't understand it now, you understood it before. So that becomes the, the rope that to stay connected to. So it's not that they have to be in the physical presence of the shaykh because that can be a handicap. But to be continuously consuming realities, continuously listening to these realities so that they stay connected. Every time the shaykh speaks it's a food and a sustenance to the soul of that servant. The ones whom are truly connected they have an insatiable appetite for realities is they have to be fed the knowledges, they have to be consuming these realities and these knowledges until the shaykh dresses the shaykh with the ability to get the guidance at all times and they become inspired from their shaykhs at all times. So continuous inspiration is, is flowing into their hearts. Because they kept the hudur and the presence of the shaykh, 
they had immense muhabbat and love for the shaykh. As a result they entered into the oceans of fana in which the shaykh has overtaken and dressed them from his reality in which they no longer exist and his reality exists. So as a result that knowledge that was in the shaykh is now dressed upon that servant. And that's the importance of the shaykhs is that they are in the fana of their shaykhs and they represent that represent that reality to creation inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah They have recently discovered an image inside an atom and it's an uncountable amount of strings or ropes. How the two realities are related from an energy perspective and the words and commands of Allah about holding on to the rope. Yeah, interesting. They know that uh, everything is based on string ther theory that everything was vibrating and they saw what looked like ropes that were vibrating and they called it string theory and yusabbihu wa bihamdi. And Allah in Holy Qur'an describes that for verily everything bihamdi is praising and has a praising. None will know it but the people of tafakkur. None understand it, none will even talk about it at that level unless they are the people of tafakkur. And that's what we described, Allah gave a special extraordinary title to these people that they are people of contemplations. And as a, resu as a result Allah opens for them extraordinary understandings, not common understandings. So everything has a resonance of vibration and a praise. So then that could go very deep if you meditate and contemplate, right? So then sound has an immense power. Just now they're trying to figure that out or, or reintroduce it because these knowledges were known. We're not at the height of our intelligence, we're in the primate state of our intelligence. We are the monkeys that are talking, haywan al nautik we are the talking animal. We're not the people of paradise. The ones who came with knowledges of the heavens, they understood sound, right? So now they're going back and saying, oh you know that cancer and, and cells can be destroyed by vibration. So they take now the resonance of sick cells or, or cancerous cells, they have to only find the vibration and frequency of it and then apply the frequency from on top of the skin and just merely apply a frequency towards that body and they annihilate the cells and the sick cells. And they have that technology. They understand that technology now but uh, it pays more to put somebody through chemotherapy because their system is based on how to make money from everything. And if there's no money in it and you can just merely put a sound vibration on something and heal people well then you're talking about their God being destroyed. So what is their God? Gold, oil and drugs. So when they say in God we trust is in gold we trust, in oil we trust and in drugs we trust. So these are the largest industries on this dunya. The drug industry is they control who they get sick and they provide its remedy, right? But anyone studying sound understand sound can be sent to anything to destroy. You take the frequency of a glass, then they have now these apps that play frequencies and you have to have the ability to measure the frequency in which a glass is vibrating at. You pick the, the frequency up then they put it on these instruments with a speaker system and they play that frequency back and it shatters the glass. Because everything is existing on a frequency and a vibration. If you find that vibration, play it back, you can shatter it and destroy it. 
So zikr must have immense power. The shaykh's du'a is a frequency in which merely their du'a and the frequency goes out. If Allah allows that frequency to touch the person, it can shatter everything incorrect within the being. So when they understand, oh look how physical people think, how can this person help you? This is such a shirk because they have no mind and no brain. If you had a little bit of scientific understanding and say, forget this is a person, imagine he's a box and he makes vibrations and sounds with a speaker. They know now in their science that we can bring one of these special devices to a person and begin to resonate a sound upon and begins to crush these sicknesses, crush these uh, cancerous cells. All sorts of realities are coming out of that. So now imagine that's not a box but something Allah made in which the resonance of the shaykh or the resonance of a person has an immense amount of frequency. Remember those nine, 90 trillion volts that we're wondering where they are? They're inside of insan. If Allah gives that servant control over their energy, they're merely their energy around the person can send frequencies that shatter everything within them that's cancerous, that's sick, that's bad, that's wrong and begin to shatter everything. But does Allah open that for everyone? No, because everyone's sickness has a hikmah, right? Everyone has a, a reason for why Allah put them in their condition. That for every condition there is a, a door in which Allah wants people to go through. If they go through the door then there may be a permission in which frequencies and du'as and uh, these realities can be accepted. So when pious people make du'a, their du'a is an energy and a frequency that's being sent to people. More powerful than your physical speaker made by Sony, they're merely sending a vibration. The a angels say, Ameen and they carry that energy vibration. If Allah grants a yes that the angel can present that and that du'a comes near the person, the vibration of that du'a it can shatter everything incorrect and wrong upon the person. If Allah permits, if Allah doesn't permit He's waiting for a condition to change. So I don't change a condition of a people until they change what's within themselves because why fix people? when they go back to doing what they're doing. Everyone's in the condition that Allah wants them in. But to understand why these energies, why these prayers, why do you pray? We said one that you make a, an energy shield around yourself from magic and all these things. So the one who has all these problems then they have to pray, they have to meditate, they have to make their connection so that their vibration increases, their shield of energy increases. Don't put your pictures out, don't do all the things that you were told that are going to bring your energy down. If they do that then they should have an immense shield of energy and a protection against difficulties. And when Allah gives a permission and these dajjals begin to present themselves, then Allah open for them inshaAllah for their energies to start moving on the earth and countering what shaitans are doing and protecting their people. That their du'a can become a shield over people to protect them from anything that comes onto this earth, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi Shaykh was the pandemic caused by 5G satellites and frequencies, how does one strike a balance with reading too much news and surfing the web? Yeah, you, you got to listen to these channels and not the, the manic utterances of crazy people on TikTok. So imagine like 10 million crack addicts and each of them have a mobile phone making TikToks from left to right, left to right, left to right. If you find it entertaining like me, hmm, because you can filter out all oh, these, oh this one's crazy, that one's crazy, this one's off, way off, this one 
is starting to get it. So this all over the place because everyone's nervous, everyone's manic. Very few may have some inspirations in which now those will be coming out with certain realities. So but don't take those as your course study. That's why I say get the books, meditate, make your connection. If you want any information then get it from this channel. If the channel didn't bring it out then hold off. Don't, don't take everything you heard from TikTok as a fact now and then trying to compare that with realities. Because they're, they're all over the place, they're also you know just bunch of crazy people with mobile phones. So everybody imagine everyone to the left of you, right of you, 10 directions this way, 10 directions that way and everyone having a phone now like news broadcasters reporting the news according to that guy. So yeah it's all over the place. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Mawlana Walaykum As Salaam wa What is the reality of the huruf dal? Because it corresponds to the sitting position in salah and also meditation. Forgive me for my ignorance. Walaykum As Salaam. No, go to nurmuhammad.com and the abjad table and the section on the abjad table, if you like the huruf then you start studying them. You click on the dal and read the article on the dal and that has to do with dalil and guidance and the reality of four. So four elements and the reality of guidance and you read upon that and, and understand, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what's the reality of feeling sensations around the feet at night? Even though one keeps environment clean and plays salawats, would admit not regular with daily awrad but do recite durood frequently. Yeah, become familiar with energy around everywhere. Yeah, feet are, are sensitive because they're always on the ground picking up the most negative energy which is all over the ground. So every type of negative frequency, lower frequency is on the ground not up high. So as a result you're walking through that energy field every day, every day, every day. So you begin to become much more sensitive through the feet. So negativity can come up your feet and then up the legs and heavenly emanations are going to tanzila emanate from the heavens because they're coming and drawing towards the heart. So emanation coming upon the servant and the dunya energy is climbing the servant. As a result there's a clash of energy of positive and negative energy at, at the belly button and the stomach. So the stomach is the source of many great battles between the heavens and the earth. Because the earthly energy and nefarious and bad energies, everything mixed up in one is coming up to attack and they want the heart. And everything from the heaven is coming to fortify the heart. So it's a continuous rain upon the servant as a result is pushing that down, pushing it down. So then the great battle that Prophet described will be in the stomach of the servant. So hence stomach problems, stomach issues and these are the, the negative energies and the battle of negative energies. So countering that is the asa so that they carry the asa which is a grounding. So if they're going to go places they can pretend like they have back problem or something and they just carry asa and that grounds them from the negative energy and that's male and female, doesn't matter. Then they have their siwak, all the energy that coming into their mouth from their food, they're continuously using the siwak, nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi to take away these bad energies from what I eat and what I drink and from just breathing in negative energies. Every breath these shaitans are trying to come into the mouth of the servant and that's why causing difficulty within their heart and that's the easiest way into their heart is to come through the breath of the servant. So they use the siwak 
they rinse and eat and try to eat the purified food, make du'a upon themselves and the food that they eat and that the food to be with du'a, to be halal, to be clean, to be good. So that not any negative energy upon that is entering into them and then that they keep their head covered at all times. So people whom are home they think, okay they don't have to protect themselves but they should protect themselves because they're going to feel an immense amount of negativity. So men when they take their hat off you feel like something biting your head, scratching. It's not, not scratching, it's these spiritual creatures are landing on your head just sort of eating the negative energy from the crown of the head. So if they feel sensitive then best that they keep their head covered and they sleep with their head covered, it's a continuous battle. So this life of ours is a battle against energy that never ceases. The time you become lazy energy overtakes you. So you sleep with wudu, you keep your head to be covered with your sleep otherwise all night long they'll be attacking in your head and on, on your, your being. So you're in a continuous state of battle against shaitan. And that's why Prophet described, don't leave me for blink of an eye. So it means that on continuous wudu, continuously in sunnah, continuously trying their best to, to fight off these attacks which is new for people because people generally think these things are only for prayer time. And when prayer time finishes they can like a superman outfit, they take it off and they go back to something ridiculous. But and then they wonder why they're being attacked all night and all day and every, everywhere they go. So the one whom feels the sensitivity it's a blessing for them because now they know the game is real. They know that when they didn't wash they're gonna get attacked, they're gonna get bitten. So nothing like being bitten to motivate the servant that, oh the shaykh was very real what he was talking about. Yeah next time you go and you lose your wudu and you don't wash they're gonna bite you everywhere. Then you understand, no, no, this is very real, these, these the ifrit and the shaitans are all over the place. And then they keep their sunnah, they keep their way and they try their best to keep these energies to, to be uh, lessened and uh, all their practices, energy practices, their ta'weezes, everything, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam Wa uh, I sing nasheed on stage a week ago at Zikr Mawlid. I hugged a lot of people after. I walked out of masjid and my upper back had crushing pain like someone was entering my back. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I think we talked about putting yourself in the, in the front and uh, being recognized that this is nice for your nafs and the nafs loves to be recognized and uh, put out a sign that please somebody recognize me because I'm, I'm special. But uh, that can be extremely dangerous and that's a problem. That as soon as uh, people want to hug you they're thinking, oh I'm so affected by what you recited and that was so amazing and they send their burdens to you and you've broken a, your covenant of protection because you've come out to promote yourself or be recognized. So your auz is breaking because of that and as a result of being recognized then people are saying, okay you're the one, I'm putting my appreciation to you and they send you all the energy, they send you their burdens, they send you their sadness, they send you their difficulties and that becomes difficult. So before it may not have been so extreme but now people are uh, loaded with sort of horrific energies because imagine the majority of people not being trained like this, majority of people not washing, not cleaning, uh, drinking, smoking, barely praying. So they're like a ship filled with uh, horrific energies and they come up and embrace you or you know everything and it's like you're picking up everything, everything. So they become very heavy for people. So that, that's the, the hikmah of keeping oneself away from people and uh, not being in the front, inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Thank you for everything you do for us to learn. 
Saidi, we learned in Timeless Reality that one of the ways to disperse energy is sujood. Does it mean that after zikr, etc., we can have this mean to purge the negative energy in case we are not grounding by hand? Further, while listening to Khatami Khwajgan, do we have to ground energy? Please forgive if questions are not properly asked. No problem. No, it's good. At least somebody read the book. <laughs> Yeah, you, you make sujood, any time you make sujood you're pushing out negative energy. So the, the, the time to push out negative energy before the zikr starts, you, you can pray your Salat Isha, Salat al-Maghrib, go into sujood that Allah take everything out and do the zikr, do the mawlid, at any time you feel like you want to go into sujood. It's not only I'm going to be dumping negative energy. But because it's such a powerful connection to the Divine, its result is the dumping of negative energy. So don't think of it as like, oh I'm going to purge energy, no this… you are closest to Allah in your sujood. So as soon as you go into sujood your, your reality is right there at your face. So that's the time in which to talk to Allah and to see yourself at the feet of Prophet and that uh, fill me with that light. So much light is coming in that it purges all the bad characteristic and that's why you see then the negative energy flowing out. So if you shoot a positive energy into something what happens? All the negativity will be purged out. So it's a very powerful position, it's not a position in which to dump things but you're gaining so much positive energy. And so near to the Divinely Presence in sujood, it's the apex of salah, the highest point of your prayer is in your sujood. So anytime you go into sujood, in the middle of the zikr you feel a closeness and you feel appreciation, you can go into sujood. But without people around and making a show of everything you do and then people wondering why you're doing things, then again you counter the, the concept of being hidden. But at home if you're listening and you feel a closeness you can go to sujood and, and, and talk to Allah talk to Prophet La Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing, keep me under the feet of your beloved Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah these are very powerful energies and powerful reality. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, in Timeless Realities it talked about the separation of the body and the soul and the grave. But we need to do that in the dunya. How can we achieve this? I think the Timeless Reality described that, that you have to sit and meditate. That was the whole concept, that you're going to have to do it in the grave anyways. That the, the concept of the grave is that the, the soul has to separate from the body because the body is going to be dissolved because it, it has to separate unless it reached sainthood in which the body stays intact. But the nafs is trying to implant itself to hold the soul. So the punishment of the grave is the cleaning and the separation process. So better to do that while you're meditating alive. You sit and meditate, meditate, meditate until you make such a strong connection your soul is easily separated from your physicality and that's when you feel the, the energies and you feel the subtlety of energy. When you don't feel anything means your body has entrapped your soul and very strong and that your dunya desire is still very strong and that you hold dunya too tight because just it's all encompassing. But the one whom doesn't care for it and Allah send whatever Allah sends but the meditation and their connection is so strong their soul is continuously moving out and they feel everything through the energy of their soul inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Assalamualaikum. Is there a connection with the reality of Lam Jalala and opening of the Divine Faculties? Thank you for everything. Is there a connection between Lam Jalala 
<laughs> the what? And opening of the divine faculties. Divine faculties? The six powers of the heart, yeah everything is based on the reality of Lam Alif. So alhamdulillah that the, the study of the Lam Alif and study of the, the understanding of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah is the secret of the way. That what happens with the Alif and the Lam? In the huruf the Alif is in front. La ilaha illallah. So it represents in the kalima Izzatullah. And the lamb has to come behind. So the lamb comes and can only connect from behind, nothing is in front of Allah. Allah connects to nothing. So the lamb, as soon as it connects, what happens? Lam alif and jalala means the Izzati and the might and majesty of Allah is then in that secret of these two bows. Two bow lengths are nearer and also the lamb was pushed in front and the alif stayed hidden behind. And that's our life, right? So everyone thinks that you know the secret is in Mecca. And they forgot about Medina. But what Lam Alif then is showing us? That it switched. That the reality of, of Mecca is actually in Medina. And Medina is actually in Mecca. So the condition of the mu'min is busy. Because Prophet is carrying his nation, his nation is, is, is interested in money. His nation is interested in big shopping centers and, and making fake Kaabas, Mukaba, paying 400 billion dollars for a ball. I don't even think they gave 1 billion for the earthquake. Can you imagine how they're going to answer to Allah for that? So that's the condition of the nation. But Medina is then the secret of where Allah is, Allah is with His servant. And that's why in Medina, Qalb al Mu'min Baytullah. So the real Baytullah is in Medina. That's Basirat al Lam Jalala. When the servant knows that secret, they know where the power is. If you're trying to get the power from Allah, it's hidden, he's hidden from you. If you try to get the power from Prophet you reached Allah because Allah is hidden within the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad That's what makes everybody to be different. That if they're holding the hand of Prophet and these are the ulama and awliya, they're very powerful. And the other ones think they're holding Allah's hand but they're delusional, they got nothing. So the Izza might is if they have to understand that, that reality. That Allah has no partner and nobody's going to draw near to Allah except through the door and the hand of Muhammadun Rasulullah It's like Allah is standing there and you're coming up to greet and Allah step back and throws Prophet in front of you that, don't, how dare you come to me like that, you're nobody. That you take the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad to show adab and to show manners and power and grace that Allah I'm hidden, it's not so easy like that. You go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why then they use it for silat, they use it for energy training, they use it for everything. Why? Because that's where the izzat and might in that reality. If they don't understand izzat and might and they don't understand the haqqaiq, they reach to no power and become just like empty carcass, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can one be dressed from the holy face of the shaykh? <laughs> yeah you got to do your muraqabah inshaAllah. Do the muraqabah and connection of the muraqabah and annihilate oneself 
and how to, to be nothing and keep meditating and meditating for the, the nazar with good deeds and good actions, you want the attention of the shaykhs. So that's why the khidmat, that's why the service, that's why you make the emails and, and make the relationship. If your relationship is hidden sitting on your couch or hidden amongst 10,000 people, you're not making the connection. And that's why we said your, your social profile in the heavens is weak. So the connection is that you know interact, send the help me emails, click on the links, click on the share the, the websites, be active. So that you know dunya is going to make a social media profile now. That if the dunya doesn't like you <laughs> they'll stop your money. You know because it, uh, the heavenly kingdom is coming, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. So anyone who's fearful of what's coming from dunya they should really fear Allah because whatever is opening of these crazy ideas it's not one drop of the reality of the heavens in which Allah is saying, my heavenly kingdom is coming. That you're not going to be able to do anything without Allah's witnessing without Allah's permission. So the dunya is the fake version of that saying that we're going to make a digital coin through our central bank and if we don't like you, you can't go to the market to go buy meat. So how can you do that? I said, because they control your currency. And then Allah's showing us, that's like my heavens, right? That all the wealth in the world you're not going to have any credit with Allah, you're not going to have any movement to do anything with Allah so Allah was just showing His might and His kingdom by the imitated actions of earth. So if, if the earth is saying you better have a good social media profile or you have to have a good social index uh, abiding by dunya matters, then imagine what Allah is expecting that you have to be active, your faith has to be in action. You know the shaykh sees the same, same people posting, giving, uh, putting out pictures, putting out articles, putting out uh, videos, uh, go through the videos, each one making comments, 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 giving a synopsis of what they heard to show that, yes I did listen to it, I did study it for the week. So that they're now under the nazar of the shaykh because the shaykh is looking through all of the platforms, their activities. That's, that's how to gate the face. If you're not and you're, you're just hiding yourself then you're imagining that their face is looking at you because it's a service, it's a khidmat. So when we're of service and we're active and we're doing everything that we're doing then we know in our heart and soul that Allah sees Prophet sees and I know my shaykh is seeing. If I know my shaykh is seeing then of course then everyone else is seeing. But if my shaykh is not seeing anything I'm doing then why do you think Prophet is watching? What, what are the good things that are attracting his attention? So his life is the same. He's continuously talking to you three days a week not only because he likes to talk for no reason but that he's trying to gain the nazar of Prophet That Prophet be happy with our khidmat and our service. That I gave you these realities, I gave you this ability, go now and help my nation. If, if it wasn't for service you would see us maybe once a month, there's not a particular excitement in doing this. But because it's a service and our life is to live a life of service and khidmat, we're doing it to be under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and everything else. Like we said, we went and pushed people, 2,000 wells coming. Oh that, that's a great nazar, right? I said before when we were doing this five years ago we had like a cake and we said happy birthday. <laughs> now when a birthday comes what happens? Tens of thousands of pounds are going out in India, Pakistan, Chicago, Los Angeles, Vancouver. For this one birthday that comes all this activity comes. So that why? So that Prophet is under the nazar of the shaykh. That Prophet is watching the shaykh and when the Prophet is watching the shaykh he's watching all his community that you motivated these people to put their faith in action. As a collective group we're under this microscope now 
And that's what Allah meant that share in the deeds of a community. If you find them to be good, share in their activity, participate with them, you'll gain the reward of them. It's the best stock that you can buy in this dunya and it's not from here. Participate in the group, give charity into the group, go out and feed within the group so that we're under the nazar of Prophet and that's why the shaykh did it so that they can be under the nazar, he can be under the nazar, his community can be under the nazar and save us from these great days because all these shaykhs are talking about, go out feed people but why they're not doing it? Everyone says it's just a uh, complete obligation in Islam to do. So this becomes faith in action, motivate these thousands of people and hundreds of people and a handful of people on five continents to go out and give food, go out and give water, go out and build wells, go out and help the orphans and go out and do projects. Do something, don't sit in and, and not do anything. In your area may come great calamities and that food and that water and that the action that you, you provided and did may be your insurance. Now it's funny that people think that I'll escape the city and I'll go into the hills. So then in California a lot of people have homes in these resort areas in the mountain and in last week a blizzard came that put so much snow, they say almost 10 to 15 feet of snow in which roofs collapsed. And they have no access to food, they have no access to water, their power is cutting off, they can't get out of their homes. Means where is it that you think you can run to be safe from Allah's punishment? Nowhere. There's nowhere to run, you don't run to the mountains. We said before the mountains are places where people are all hiding there for some reason, we don't know why. But wherever you are is where you'll be safe if Allah is good with you. If you fed people, you did good deeds, you did good actions, you'd be safe exactly where you are. Even He'll make all 5,000 buildings fall but yours won't. Or at least He'll wake you up, get up and get out of that house. So there's nowhere to run because there's nowhere safe anymore, everything is coming everywhere. If in your area you're not going to go out and you're not going to feed and you're not going to do good, you're not going to do khidmat, you're not going to do anything then what's the purpose that you serve on this earth? And that's what's right and that's what's happening now. If they're not going to do anything then they're taking space. If they are going to do something and they want the nazar of Prophet then they're under the intercession and nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad That's why in each area that go out, be active, give food, give, find orphans, do things so that is an insurance policy. Do good actions and good deeds. We pray that Allah inspire more and more people to be consistent, to be active for their own safety, for the, the goodness of been written for them, their family and their communities. And the greatest taweez and protection from the anger and qadabullah, the anger of Allah is the feeding and taking care and good deeds, good actions and the propagation of knowledge. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.